Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel, and I'd like to introduce you to a new friction hitch I devised. I'm going to call this the JRB Ascender Hitch. If you're familiar with the mechanical hand ascender, fantastic device because it moves up the line with ease. And you put as much load as you need to here with your body as you're climbing up a rope whether you're tree climbing or rock climbing or caving anyone who's climbing a rope and the, the device is operated with ease and gives you a handle you've got a place to really pull a good chunk of your weight it struck me that there's no friction hitch that offers similar properties and here we've got one so I'm going to go over the requirements for and features for this friction hitch. So the first point is it has a toggle. It has a carabiner which serves as a handle and can take a minor load and be used in ascent. We've got a friction hitch which provides a reliable and consistent hold on the rope. It moves easily. It's not prone to jamming while we climb. It doesn't work itself tighter or work itself looser. It's tunable, meaning if the exact characteristics of the friction cord and the rope that you're using are different, you need to add turns that you're capable of doing that. It's a friction hitch which is capable of being rigged into process, I'm sorry, progress capture systems. So instead of this handle, being used in ascent, it can be used for progress capture. For example, in moving rope systems. This can tend the hitch while ascent is occurring in a moving rope system. And it is capable of operating without the toggle, without the handle. It, it pro provides that same firm and reliable hold. And lastly, it can be operated in what I call bridge mode. Bridge mode is where the car carabiner is also holding a load. And I'm going to demonstrate that later. It's got all these unique properties. Now why would we need this? Well, we might need to attach both sides of the hitch to either side of our harness, for example, an arborist who wants to get really close to his or her tie-in point. Okay, so let's do a couple quick demonstrations on the hitch's features. I'm gonna hook up my bridge. And I've got I've got a guard a hitch foot loop that I devised. You can find a separate video on how to create that. This video will be about the friction hitch and again there's no mechanical devices in this setup I'm intentionally climbing a tree today where I can't get my feet on the tree for any kind of hip thrust or any kind of assistance so this is you know a more difficult climb relative to most tree climbs and what I'm using today is 11.4 millimeter Samson Predator rope and sterling 7 millimeter hitch cord I'll show you how this works. So how much force am I using to advance that? Well, let's just take my thumb. Let's just take my two fingers. It moves with ease. Let's remove my foot loop create a little bit of a friction break with it and let's repel like like a Blake's hitch repel just with my two fingers just with my two fingers I can repel let's do that again but let's do it this time without the toggle now I don't I'm not claiming that the best way to repel is with a friction hitch but it's nice to know that you can as a backup. Remember that a mechanical ascender cannot be used in descent or repel. It must be removed from the system. And friction hitches make great backups for repel devices. It's nice to know that they work. I don't need to go too high to demonstrate. 
remove that completely. Quite remarkable. Okay, so let's get in the business of tying one of these and then we'll do a climb on a doubled rope system. Now I will point out that we're gonna, we're gonna follow this up with additional videos. I will demonstrate how to tie it in both chiralities. Uh, I will be tying today the right-handed version, the right-handed ascender. So let's take a look at the finished product first. It's got four bars up top, got these two vertical bars on the bottom, and it's got this, what I'll call, bridge mechanism on the right side, the same side that my carabiner would go on. Let's, so let's tie one of these. I start with five feet or approximately 152 centimeters of that sterling seven millimeter hitch cord. And I'm going to consume 29 inches or 74 centimeters in the creation of the hitch. So it's quite greedy in nature. And again, I, I prescribe that this is tied with a length of cord, not with an eye to eye, and of course not with a Prusik loop. Surprise, I'm interrupting my own video just to make sure you get this detail about how to tie this correctly. So let's start. I'm gonna build a right and a left-handed JRB ascender. I will start with the right. So this is a five foot strand of cord. I'm gonna choose about 12 inches or 30 centimeters and I'm going to start with that hanging off the right side. That will constitute my standing end. It will not change position. I start by laying that across the rope, take the working end, go in an upward fashion, one turn, two full turns around the rope. It folds down, it goes behind the rope, and then I will fish it down through these two turns right here. A little hard to do this myself and keep you uh, in view, but watch what I did there. So that constitutes the bottom stage of the JRB ascender hitch. Now we're going to build the upper stage. The rope was going, I'm sorry, the cord was going around in this fashion. I will continue that sequence from right to left and I will make four turns a helix above the bottom stage. So this is one, two, three, four. I will now bind that helix by taking the working end and putting it through the cord as it entered the helix so that you can see I've got four turns, no matter how you look at it, I've got four turns. And the last part to finish it is take the working end and bring it through the two bars, the two vertical bars on the bottom stage. That's the hitch, but you'll recall that I want to make sure that this is always closed with a bend and therefore loaded uniformly. And so I will go ahead and fashion that on the right. So I, I use a hunter's bend for that. You may use something else and that would affect your length of the cord you need to build this. So, not dressed real well, but that's the jig. Now, when we want to take slack out of this, I'm going to have you watch what happens. If I pull on the strand that comes down off the helix as we finished it, it goes in and through here. If I pull on that, that's what takes slack out of the, of the hitch and allows it to bind. Okay, now let's build on the other side, let's build the left-handed version. I'll start with the same convention, about a foot of cord goes off the left, place it on top, around once, around twice. Drops down in front, around the back, and 
down through those two strands. That's the bottom stage. Continuing my theme of this polarity of wrap, I go around the back and I will make a total of four wraps. One, two, three, four. And now I bind the helix by putting the cord through it so it it binds and drops back behind the lower stage and I will bring that through the lower stage through the first vertical bar and through the second vertical bar. That's the hitch. Dress it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now, I am going to grab my carabiner and show you exactly how we affix that. So it goes, it, it engages the rope, the cord on the right, and this drop bite. So I bring it through like that. That's how the carabiner sits. Let's put one on the other side. So it's going to come in from the far side come through like that. Now, uh, you recall the one on the right I've already closed in a bend. Let me go ahead and close the one on the left in a bend. The one on the left I've tied using six feet of cord rather than five. In the introduction, that way if I demonstrate for you bridge mode, you can see it a little better. This is how it accepts load in bridge mode, like here and here. Okay, and the same deal to dress this. I will pull on the line that drops out of the upper helix. And there it is, ready to take load. Okay, taking you back to the woods now. So let's put our carabiner on, and this is how that's done. The carabiner, because it's a right-handed ascender, is going to go in and grab everything but the left strand of rope. It's going to grab all of that. And I like to orient these upside down. It just makes it a little easier on my hand. You can, you know, whatever, whatever feels right with your beaner, whatever feels right in your hand. But as long as it's through that drop bite, you're good to go. So let me go ahead and load that. I'm not going to climb it. I'm just going to load it. got a reliable consistent hold. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you the JRB ascender hitch in action, but this time on a doubled rope system. We call this the JRB climbing system. And what I've done here is I have taken the hitch and folded the loop through the handle. So the handle is going to accept load as well. Well, why did I do that? Well, there's numerous applications for it, but what I've noticed is we work down into these smaller diameter ropes and lines. So here I have eight millimeter Mammut Alpine Dry climbing rope. It's a dynamic rope. And I've tied friction hitches with Blue Water Titan 5.5 millimeter hitch cord. And when you're working down on those kind of diameters and smaller, I find that it can be advantageous to rig the system in, in this way.
but it's such a comfortable way to climb. I have such confidence in those hitches and have no other hitches in my arsenal that I can throw upward with confidence that they're going to hold. And with cord of this diameter, it's rare that you can break it with ease. So I'm going to throw in a, a Munzer friction hitch. And I'm going to break those hitches. So watch how easy they are to break. Just with two fingers, I break that. And I can tend these on the way down. Just tend them with my fingers. But they're always ready to hold. If I let go of the system, it immediately catches me. Always ready. Okay, well, as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing like it. And it's been a real joy putting it together and testing it. And so I look forward to your feedback. Happy climbing and safe climbing. Let me know what you think.